Hello, my name is Michael Stelter, and I'm the president of Advanced Business Coaching. Advanced Business Coaching works with small business owners with less than 50 employees to help them grow their business and achieve their dreams to become a true business owner. Today, small business owners are in a fight for their lives. They need to find new prospects and customers, but advertising and marketing efforts that used to work don't work anymore. They're spending thousands of dollars for advertising and marketing and getting less and less return on their marketing investment. Truthfully, small business owners are scared and they don't know what to do. And when people are scared, they don't always make the best decisions. The way the consumer shops and buys things today is significantly different than it was 30 years ago. Think about it. How do you buy things today? Back 30 years ago, if they wanted to know about your product or service, they would call you or come and ask you questions. You had time to build a relationship. Today, things are really different. Because of the internet and a seemingly endless amount of information that is available, by the time they come and talk to you, your prospective customer already knows that they want to buy something and the price they want to pay. The only real decision they have to make is do they want to buy it from you or from your competitor. We've seen this trend developing over the past 35 years and found the answer to your frustration. Our systematic process is simple and easy to understand, but it's a real change in the way that you look at your customers and your business. This series of short videos are designed to educate you about all the changes that have impacted your customers and all the businesses around us and how you can use this information to significantly improve the results from your advertising and marketing investment. Simply put, we believe that everything that you ever learned about generating leads and growing your business is wrong, and we're about to share with you why and how to fix it. Over the past two videos, we've been trying to help you understand that the change that needs to be made by most business owners is to focus on strategic marketing. That's what you say and how you say it rather than tactical marketing, where you put your message, like radio, TV, print ads, trade shows, websites, etc. In our first video, we clarified the purpose of marketing, which is to facilitate your prospect's decision-making process. In the second video, we helped you see the difference between your inside reality and the outside perception of your business. Your inside reality is how you conduct business, treat your customers, and deliver extraordinary value to your customers. Your outside perception is how your prospects and customers see your business, often from your advertising and marketing. The sad truth is that they are not the same thing. With this educational video, The History of Marketing, we'll share with you why these marketing issues are happening and what you can do to fix this in your business forever. So let's watch History of Marketing. Everything you currently know about marketing does not effectively allow you to accurately and succinctly portray your inside reality to the outside world. This is a product of decades of being conditioned to do marketing the wrong way. In the very early days of advertising, and I'm talking about the late 1800s and early 1900s, much of the advertising that existed back then was comparative in nature. Ads would basically say, we're better, and here's exactly why based on this and that. On average, they did a pretty good job of building a case and helping prospective buyers understand the important issues with regards to their product or service. The result was that the outside perception was generally a pretty good reflection of the company's inside reality. And then, a significant event in history of marketing and advertising took place in 1945. Television was commercially introduced for the first time up until then, total national distribution of advertising messages was extremely limited to radio, print advertising, and a few magazines, and maybe the Sears catalog. But with the introduction of TV, large advertisers could buy a TV commercial and reach just about every living person in the country for about $4,000 a minute, usually sold in one or two minute blocks. What a bargain, even in $1950. But back then, there were only three channels. So demand quickly outstripped the supply of commercials, and prices shot through the roof. 
In response to the rising cost, the length of commercials shrank down from 2 minutes to 30 seconds. This meant that advertisers had less time to educate us to the important and relevant issues and to build a case as to why they were different or better or unique. So instead of attempting to use shorter ads that highlighted their comparative benefits, advertisers changed tactics and started using slogans. That change made it harder for the company's outside perception to accurately reflect its inside reality. But remember that marketing's first job is simply to get the prospect's attention. Even running just 30-second ads, getting their attention was still not a problem for these advertisers. But then what? That's right, after you grab the prospect's attention, you must next facilitate their decision-making process. Companies and their ad agencies found that this was a lot harder to do, especially in 30 seconds, but they also found that they didn't really need to do it. Because the number of real competitors, that is the number of competitors that could actually afford to advertise on TV and run ads against other ads, was wonderfully few. They could spend a ton of money running 30-second ads and win by default. Now, if there happened to be two or three major competitors jockeying for the same prospect, like Pepsi and Coke, that was fine, because there was plenty of business to divide up two or three ways. The bottom line is that a company's inside reality and outside perception didn't really have to match up. The lack of substantial number of choices eliminated that necessity. So the focus for all marketing and advertising shifted to simply getting the prospect's attention. That's when advertising lost its penchant for selling and instead shifted to a focus of creativity. The idea now was to get the consumer's brain with something creative that would stimulate them and cause them to recall the product later on when they needed it. So that's when slogans became the de facto marketing standard that is still in use today. What businesses use slogans? Here's a few. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more in car insurance. The breakfast of champions. The home of the Whopper. How about this one? Is it live or is it? How many of you remember that? It's Memorex. And how did you know that? That commercial hasn't run since the 1970s. This new creative approach took over advertising as we know it and it soon began to filter into all other advertising media, including radio, Google AdWords, newspaper, magazines, billboards, yellow pages, websites, you name it. Once this new creative message was in place, the big companies opened up their checkbooks and spent a lot of money, and basically gave people no other option but then to remember their message. After hearing things go better with Coke for the 8,000th time, you're going to remember it whether you want to or not. We call this C and R advertising. C is for creativity, R is for repetition. Create an ad that is unusual, weird, shocking, funny, emotional, and so on. Spend a million dollars running that ad about a million times and then haul your dough down to the bank. With all of that, the era of the brand builders was born. Ad agencies started running this formula for all their other clients, even the ones that were smaller and didn't have deep pockets. Business schools started teaching marketing and advertising based on these methods that were being successfully implemented by the largest companies in the world, and turning out graduates who only knew one thing to do. Brand builder marketing and advertising became the de facto standard for how you do it, and after a few years, no one even bothered to question the formula which brings us to the crux of our problem. All of us alive today, with no exceptions, grew up in an area where almost all the advertising you have ever seen or heard is a product of the era of the brand builders. Over time, we've all become conditioned as to what constitutes a good advertisement. We learned the fundamental pattern for what is, was put into a commercial. We learned about slogans and jingles and being funny. We learned that in marketing and advertising, the outside perception no longer has to reflect the inside reality. 
So let me repeat what I said at the very beginning of this presentation. Everything you've ever learned about generating leads and growing your business is wrong. And now you know why. As a result of this new breed of advertising, jargon has now started to dominate all marketing and advertising. Think of jargon as words or phrases that are deniably commonplace and predictable, that lack power to evoke interest through overuse or repetition, and that nevertheless, they're stated as if they were original and significant. In advertising, you see and hear jargon all the time. See, you simply can't describe, demonstrate, exhibit, reveal, or display your inside reality using jargon. It's impossible. And unfortunately, the end result is an outside perception that you're no different than anyone else. There's absolutely no distinction, no separation, no differentiation. None. You just flat out can't make your inside reality and outside perception match up when you use jargon like this. Since businesses only have 30 seconds to try to convey what makes them special, they lump everything into jargon, such as largest selection, most professional, lowest prices, highest quality, best service, fastest, most convenient, largest in the state, more honest, we're the experts, we specialize, we work harder, we get the job done right the first time, and we've been in business for 4,000 years. Now listen, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be these kinds of things. They actually make up the foundation of which you want to build on on your inside reality. But consider this. If my marketing says that I offer high quality and great service, isn't that drearily commonplace and predictable? Doesn't it lack the power to evoke interest through overuse or repetition? In fact, let me give you several ways that you can easily and quickly evaluate your own marketing to see if you're getting caught up in the jargon trap. Jargon evaluation number one is what we call the well, I would hope so. When you make a claim, don't think about it in terms of the words coming out of your mouth. Think about it in terms of the words entering your prospect's ears. This will enable you to realize just how absurd most jargon sounds. Look at the messaging in your marketing, and then ask yourself if the prospect's immediate response might be, well, I would hope so. Let me give you an example. I recently saw a TV ad for a remodeling company. Throughout the ad, they continually emphasized the fact that their work was of the highest quality, that they were fairly priced, that they guaranteed 100% satisfaction. Well, I would hope so. Would any of us hire any remodeler who didn't provide all of those as a standard part of their service? Of course not. This is all jargon. Drearily commonplace, lacks power to evoke interest through overuse and repetition. Here's another example, a consulting company. Our training leads to change. We increase productivity, performance, and profit of your company. Well, I would hope so. Does anyone hire a consultant for any other reason than to do those things? Most ads today are nothing more than a jargon fest. Does this jargon tell you anything about these companies inside reality? What else would you expect them to say? Everyone's always going to say wonderful things about their company if they can get away with it. The problem is that if your company has an excellent inside reality, and you're using the same jargon as everyone else, then the outside perception is that you're all the same. The problem is that if your company has an exceptional inside reality, and you're using the same jargon as everyone else, then the outside perception is that you're all the same, and that's when prospects default to the company offering the lowest price. Price now becomes the only determining factor, and when you use the simple evaluation, just ask yourself openly and honestly, why would anyone choose you over your competition? Then evaluate your answer against the, well, I would hope so, evaluation. And finally, check out all of your advertising and marketing materials, including your website. Do they pass the, well, I would hope so test? Most of them are all chock full of jargon, and if they fail, 
then you need to make changes. Let me provide you with a second evaluation technique. It's called the who else can say that. This is similar to the first evaluation technique, and it's also a product of the area of the brand builders. Pay very close attention to this one. Stop thinking in terms of who else can do that. Instead, think in terms of who else can say what you say. Because the answer, unfortunately, is usually anybody and everybody can say what you can say. I know a kitchen remodeler that ran, by far, the most impressive remodeling company in his community. Every member of his crew had at least 15 years of remodeling experience. They were all certified subcontractors. They had won multiple industry awards. They were the only kitchen remodeling company that provided not only a full satisfaction guarantee, but also a 10-year material and labor warranty on everything they did. They always left the job site every night cleaner than when they arrived. They also guaranteed that they could remodel any kitchen in no more than five days. That's half the time of their competitors. This, of course, meant far less disruption and inconvenience for the homeowner. In short, their inside reality was literally second to none, but they had a huge marketing problem. Their marketing looked virtually identical to all of their far less worthy competitors. Their marketing said things like certified subcontractors, guaranteed satisfaction, and then a long laundry list of all the things that they performed, such as new cabinets installed, complete kitchen remodeling, and so on. And get this, they even accept Visa and MasterCard. Well, I would hope so, but then ask this question, who else can say that? When the owner of the remodeling company was asked that very question, he got really defensive. He said, there are no other remodelers that can begin to match what we do. Our subcontractors are far and away the best there is. No one, and I mean no one, can say what we say. Understandably, this contractor was extremely passionate and protective when it came to the superior company that he had worked so long and hard to develop over the years. So finally, to try to get the point across to him, he was asked to pull up the websites of his five biggest competitors and see what all of them were saying on their page. Let's just say that his jaw hung open for about two minutes straight before he finally pointed at the screen and said, Oh my gosh, look at this other company's website. I know this guy. He's terrible. But his site says exactly the same thing as mine. In fact, I think he copied my site word for word. He looked at the other remodelers and saw that their websites were virtually identical to his. So remember, it's not who can do what you can do. It's who can say what you can say. And if your marketing is full of jargon, then sadly, that answer is all of your competitors can do exactly that same thing. Let me give you one final jargon detection evaluation. It's called the scratch out and write in test. Take a look at your brochures, your advertising, your website. Now scratch out your name and write in your competitor's name. That's it. If the marketing is still valid, if the website still conveys the same basic message, if there wouldn't need to be any changes at all, then guess what? You just failed the test. This evaluation can be very revealing. Most businesses discover that they run fairly high on the jargon meter. You may find your inside reality, as excellent as it may be, is nowhere to be found in your marketing message. And it's all but lost in this sea of jargon and completely invisible to your prospects. Is this starting to make sense to you now? Is it evident that this might be a problem for you now and a tremendous competitive advantage if you could figure out how to fix this for your own business? So let me show you how to fix this. Let me explain to you how you can follow a very simple process we call the conversion equation. And when you do, you will eliminate jargon forever. I'm going to show you how to become a communications powerhouse to make your outside perception become an excellent reflection of your inside reality, 
and finally begin to get the results from your marketing that you should be getting. In the next video segment, we'll go into detail on each of these components and how they will help you create marketing that will do what marketing is supposed to do for your business. But let me take some time now to give you a brief description of each of these components to this powerful equation. The first component of the conversion equation is called interrupt. It is simply the process of getting qualified prospects to pay attention to your marketing. It is often accomplished by affecting the prospect emotionally. Sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Unfortunately, it's a lot more difficult to pull off in real life unless you understand what you're about to learn here. The second component is engage. Once the prospect is interrupted, it's critical to give the reader the promise that information is forthcoming. That will help the prospect make the best decision possible, or in other words, facilitate their decision-making process. This is also best accomplished on an emotional level. The third component is educate. Once you've interrupted and engaged the prospect, you have to give them information that allows them to logically understand how and why you solve their emotional problem. This is accomplished by giving detailed, quantifiable, specific, inside reality revealing information. This turns the corner from an emotional cell. Remember, you interrupted and engaged them on an emotional hot buttons to a logical cell. This is easy to do if you just follow the conversion equation. And the fourth and final component of the conversion equation is the offer. Now the prospect has been interrupted based on problems that are important to them emotionally, engaged by the promise of a solution to that emotional problem, and they've examined the educational information that makes your solution to that emotional problem real and believable. So the last step is for you is to give the prospect a low or better yet no risk way for them to take the next step in the sales process. This can be accomplished by offering a free marketing tool such as a report, brochure, seminar, audio or video recording, something similar that educates them even more so that the prospect feels completely in control of the decision-making process. This conversion equation follows the formula for what marketing is supposed to do in the first place. In fact, at this point, we can simply say that marketing's job is to interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. Through these videos, we've been helping you understand why we believe that everything you've ever learned about generating leads and growing your business is wrong. So let me clarify what that statement means and what we've shared so far. In our first video, we've clarified the purpose of marketing, to facilitate your prospect's decision-making process. Then we helped you see the difference between your inside reality and your outside perception. Your inside reality is how you conduct business, treat your customers, and deliver extraordinary value. Your outside perception is how your prospects and customers see your business, often from your advertising and marketing. The sad truth is, for most businesses, they are often not the same. Then in this most recent video, The History of Marketing, we shared how marketing has changed and why these changes happened. And now, with the next educational video, The Conversion Equation, we'll share with you the systematic formula and details and processes that you can use for your business so that you can fix these in your business and its marketing forever. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you at the next video.